George Washington's story began in the heart of colonial Virginia. On a crisp February morning in 1732, amid the rolling fields of Pope's Creek, a future icon was born. His parents, Augustine and Mary Ball Washington, welcomed their first child into a world of plantation life and social hierarchy. Augustine inculcated in young George the values of hard work and discipline. The Washington family held a respectable position within the colony's social order. Augustine wanted to provide his children with the means to make their mark on the world. Life at Pope's Creek was far removed from the sophistication of European courts. The land dictated the rhythm of life with seasons of plenty and hardship. Young George developed a deep appreciation for nature and self-reliance. These early years laid the foundation for the man George Washington would become. Augustine Washington's death in 1743 cast a long shadow over Ferry Farm and had a profound impact on young George's life. The loss of his father, a figure of immense influence and leadership, left a void that would never be completely filled. Augustine's death also had significant financial implications for the Washington family. Resources to give George the formal education his father envisaged were limited. While his older half-brothers were privileged to attend Appleby Grammar School in England, George's educational path would follow a different one. Limited by financial constraints and social norms, George's formal education was entrusted to local teachers. Despite these limitations, George possessed an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and a relentless drive for self-improvement. He devoured every book he could get his hands on and immersed himself in history, geography, mathematics, and surveying. He diligently practiced his handwriting and developed an elegant and legible script. This unconventional education forged George Washington's character and intellect. It imbued in him the values of self-reliance, resourcefulness, and a lifelong commitment to learning. After the American Revolution, George Washington's view of slavery evolved. He began to take concrete steps to dismantle slavery. In 1783, Washington decided to free the enslaved in his will. This act had limitations and complexities. Washington's will provided that the enslaved would be freed after his wife's death. Their future remained uncertain. Land surveying in colonial Virginia was more than just a technical occupation. It was a path to wealth and influence. Skilled surveyors were indispensable to turn vast tracts of wilderness into profitable ventures. For young George Washington, surveying offered a lucrative opportunity. The dangers of the frontier tested Washington's courage and resilience. Wildlife and diseases were a constant threat. Thanks to his diligence and accuracy, Washington managed to win numerous contracts. These ventures brought him financial independence and made him an emerging figure in Virginia society. The year 1754, the Franco-Indian War erupts. North America becomes the battleground of a conflict between France and Britain. For George Washington, the start of hostilities is a baptism of fire. He is thrown into the midst of war. In July 1754, French troops attacked Fort Necessity. The battle that follows, amid torrential rain, is a desperate struggle for survival. After hours of fierce fighting, the outcome is a bitter defeat. Forced to surrender Fort Necessity, Washington and his troops march back east. An alliance of fortunes. The marriage of George and Martha Washington. In the heart of colonial Virginia, amid the rolling hills and vast plantations, a union of great significance took place. On a crisp January evening in 1759, George Washington and Martha Dandridge Custis exchanged wedding vows. This marriage would profoundly shape their lives and intertwine their destiny with that of a nation. We know George Washington as the father of our nation and a brilliant military strategist, but we often forget his talents as an entrepreneur. For Washington, Mount Vernon was more than a home. It was a canvas for his vision of prosperity and innovation. Imagine Washington back from war with renewed purpose. His experiences on the border had sparked in him a desire to transform his estate. He sought diversification away from traditional tobacco farming. He experimented with new crops such as wheat, maize, and flax. Washington's entrepreneurial spirit extended beyond the fields. He saw the strategic importance of Mount Vernon's location on the Potomac River.
a legacy of entrepreneurship, the indefatigable spirit of Mount Vernon. George Washington's entrepreneurial legacy extends far beyond the confines of Mount Vernon. His innovative spirit and unyielding work ethic have left an indelible mark on the young nation. Washington's example inspired countless Americans to embrace the spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation. His writings on agriculture helped spread good practices among American farmers. Mount Vernon is an ode to Washington's entrepreneurial spirit and enduring legacy. Visitors gain a deeper appreciation for the man who built it and his vision of a prosperous nation. The spirit of George Washington lives on in Americans who continue to work hard and embrace innovation. Among the despair of the winter of 1776, a spark of hope glimmered. Washington addressed his exhausted troops, their faces marked by fatigue. The crossing of the Delaware River became a testament to the Continental Army's bravery. The echoes of the revolutionary victory had barely faded when a new crisis gripped the young United States. The spirit of unity began to crack, which revealed deep-seated tensions and competing interests. The Articles of Confederation, adopted in 1777, proved unsuitable for peacetime governance. Its weaknesses hampered a cohesive national identity. Washington, withdrawn at Mount Vernon, received reports of political scheming and economic instability. The states bickered over borders, trade and taxes, which hindered national unity. The Continental Congress, lacking power, drifted adrift. National debt hung like a dark cloud over the young nation's economic prospects. The dream of a united nation was in danger of fading away. In the spring of 1789, all eyes turned to Mount Vernon. George Washington was asked to serve as the first president. The journey from Mount Vernon to New York City was a triumphant procession. Crowds were cheering all along the road, eager to see their new president. Church bells rang, cannons roared, and citizens welcomed Washington with open arms. On 30th of April, 1789, Washington stood before the assembled dignitaries. He took the oath and pledged to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. The task ahead of him was enormous. The Constitution was just a framework for governing a nation. It was up to Washington to establish the institutions and traditions that would shape American governance. As Washington began his second term in 1793, the young republic faced a series of challenges. Washington proclaimed a proclamation of neutrality. The country could conserve its resources and energy for the challenges of nation building. Domestically, Washington faced a different kind of crisis, the Whiskey Rebellion of 1794. Washington personally led a militia force to put down the rebellion. In December 1799, after a brief illness, the nation's first president breathed his last. Imagine the mourning that swept through the country when news of Washington's death reached every town, village, and farm. George Washington, the father of the fatherland, was laid to rest in Mount Vernon. Stay curious, stay informed, stay tuned to Era Shapers.